opal, uh, the top three gemstones to avoid if you don't want a diamond. So consider yourself warned. Let's flip it. Advised, not warned. Advised. Warned. Advised. 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 Warned. Advised. Advised. Warned. Advised. Warns. Or no, because look. I'm an equal lover of gemstones. You are, it's true. I'm here to be an advocate for gemstones and, and diamonds. I'm here to help the client choose what's right. It's true. But I also have to match the gemstone to their lifestyle choice. There are gemstones that yep. you would recommend uh, as solid diamond alternatives. Yes. So uh, let's give the people some good news. Yes. The, the positive news. We're not just downers about what to avoid the whole time. Yeah. So the, the top three gemstones to choose. Yes. If you decide you don't want. This a, is a more upbeat conversation. Yes, it will I'm, be. I'm more eager to have this. One. More fun. You like this one more. Uh, so number three. That part out of the way. Uh, number three uh, gemstone to choose if you don't want a diamond. This is one to go with are some garnets. Yeah, some garnets. Now, the word some is interesting to me. Why, why only some garnets? And for, for, for what is a garnet and why only some? So a garnet is its own variety of, 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 of gemstone. It's a, a pyrope, I believe, technically. To, yeah, I believe Double that G. is. I believe, <laughs> I believe pyrope is the species and, and garnet is the variety. I think that's right. If it's not, you'll edit it. <laughs> <laughs> nope. <laughs> Every mistake you make gets amplified, oh, not edited. Oh, man. Um, and that's what that's the the burden of having your name on the show. Yeah, and so uh, garnets can actually range in hardness from a seven and a half to an eight. Um, Doesn't sound like a very big range. It's uh, half is huge. Oh yeah, uh, one move one number movement on Mo's hardness scale is is enormous. Wow, it's the difference between remember what I just said. Emerald is not a good choice at seven and a half to an eight. Yeah, garnet is a seven and a half to an eight, but the difference is of course. Garnet has tough, a, tough. it's a tougher stone. Huh. And, and so while I wouldn't suggest all garnets per se, there are, matter of fact, when, when the customer comes in that wants uh, an emerald mm -hmm. for that engagement ring, I might say, let's not do an emerald in the center, but what you love about emerald is it's beautiful Kelly green color. Mm -hmm. uh, you love how rich it is. Let's find a beautiful demantoid garnet or a savorite garnet mm -hmm. because the savorite garnet in particular possesses a really similar color. Some would say even a superior color to, mm -hmm. to uh, emerald because it's a, it's a richer, it's a cleaner stone, meaning it has fewer inclusions in it. And it's a more durable gemstone to be worn every day. Yeah. Now, demantoids in particular, which is um, a particular variety. Demantoids? Demantoid. It's only found, I believe, in, in pockets in Russia. And okay. it has, from a gem, gem nerd perspective, uh -huh. it has one of the coolest gem uh, inclusions, something to, to Google or throw up on the screen maybe. Of uh, vodka? No. Oh, I would have. No, it has, it has inclusions on the inside that we call a horsetail inclusion, which is kind of like a real wispy, okay. circular shape inclusion. Any, any gemologist that would look at it. So that is a really nice horsetail inclusion inside that demand toy. <laughs> sounds like, sounds like a, I feel like that's going to be the, that's going to be the thumbnail <laughs> snippet you put on this episode. <laughs> that's a, that's a winning pickup line. I have been known to admire a horsetail inclusion people. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> In your demand toy. In my demand toy. Good. However, demantoid typically is a very expensive gemstone because it is rare to find demantoid in like in, in larger than half carat sizes. Okay. So if somebody wants a one carat or a two carat version of demantoid, yeah, you're going to pay for the privilege of a of a two carat demantoid. It's it's unusual. And again, that's a garnet. That's a type. That's of, a garnet. A type of garnet. demantoid garnet and savorite garnet would yeah. be two of my favorite choices okay. for. Uh, and, but then there's beautiful orange garnets. There's mm -hmm. spessartite garnet, which can sometimes be called mandarin garnet because it mm. literally is the color of a, of a like a mandarin orange. Hmm. Uh, and then there's beautiful reds, of course. There's uh, Almondine garnet, which is a little bit browner, and then there's rhodolite garnet, which has some purple. Way more information than you wanted to know about garnet. Well, get, but essentially, garnet in all of these different colors, yeah. that's the point. Grape garnets comes in purples. It comes in, I don't, I can't think of a blue garnet off the top of my head. So I don't think it comes quite the full spectrum of the rainbow, although you'll find some of the greens will have shades of blue. So you can still get some of the other colors that you yeah. might want uh, if you don't want the, a, a white diamond. Yeah. And you're also getting the benefit of that gar these some garnets are, are harder and, and tougher. Than That's correct. Yep. And now it's important to differentiate. Just because I'm saying these are good alternatives to a diamond, it is not anywhere near the hardness of a diamond. A seven and a half to an eight, while on the scale, like you said, oh, it's only two or two and a half, uh, it's, it's an enormous difference yeah. in, in hardness. It's, it still can chip, it still can scratch, because again, a diamond can chip, a diamond can scratch. Yeah. 
Okay. It's just less likely to happen. So uh, number three option to choose if you don't want a diamond is some garnets. Number two uh, gemstone to choose in your engagement ring if you don't want a diamond, spinel. Mm-hmm. Spinel. John Carter loves oh, man. loves him some spinels. I get all weak when you, I talk about uh, spinel, baby. Love spinel like a like a basic girl loves pumpkin spice latte. <laughs> love yourself some spinel. You had that joke prepared, didn't you? You love. Uh, you, I, you, I, I got more. I got, you you got get, that? Yeah. Keep you, going. Uh, John Carter loves spinels like Kanye West loves Kanye West. <laughs> That's how much I, John I, Carter. I don't think anybody can love anything that much. Um, so what is it about spinels that you love and why are they a good diamond alternative? A spinel is a lovely gemstone from just about every aspect that you can tackle. It is a tremendous value for what it is. Spinel, first of all, to explain what spinel is, spinel is its own gemstone. It is the only negative with spinel that I can think of is it is cursed with a terrible name. No. Because spinel sounds to people like mm. a, a synthetic or a man-made gemstone. Mm. It's not. Hmm. And the ironic thing is, is actually spinel is generally, when you see it in jewelry or you see loose gemstones, mm. generally what you're looking at is not even treated to turn it the color that it is. Most colored stones have some sort of treatment to turn them the color that it is under your eye. Unless otherwise disclosed, you really have to assume that it has not, that it has been altered to turn it that color Hmm. for almost all gems. Really? Spinel is usually the reverse. There are treatments that they can do to spinel, but it's rarer. Uh, It typically doesn't help it that much. So there typically you don't see a lot of heat treatments. You don't see a lot of oiling, which is a way that they fill fissures in the stones or or cracks, which are very common in emeralds in particular. Uh, so you'll see very little of that in, in spinel because the material is usually very clean. It is, it possesses a really nice hardness. Okay. Again, it's a seven and a half to an eight, which sounds hypocritical because we just criticized yeah. Emerald for being a seven right. and a half to an eight, but the toughness is, is higher. So it's the combo. It has good toughness. That hardness, toughness yeah. combo is what you're looking for. Yep. And so it's a really durable gemstone to be worn every day. And then the, the, another thing to love about it is it, almost truly comes in any color you can imagine. Hmm. Uh, my favorite colored stone of, of really anything is probably gray spinel. Yeah, you, you like know. the gray. Yeah. I love grays because they just really have this really richness to them. It sounds terrible on camera until you actually experience one in person. <laughs> you, you, you just mentioned how you don't like the word spinel, then you put gray in front of it. It yeah. just sounds like a total downer. Yeah, you might as well just call it a storm cloud. <laughs> you know, but it really is. Will you is, marry me, honey? Here's a storm here's cloud. Here's a storm cloud yep. spinel. Maybe I should trademark that. <laughs> um, it's, but it, it, it also has this um, uh, movement to the color a little bit. It's not a color change usually, although there are color change spinels where it truly change from you know, red to blue. Yeah. Uh, but the gray spinels typically shift a little bit in color. They'll shift from like a steely gray to almost a teal to sometimes a purple hmm. to sometimes a, you know, a, like a periwinkle color. They're really, really pretty, really um, almost a little chameleon type yeah. uh, thing goes on with the color. Um, and again, it's a great stone for everyday wear. And it's super, it is the most, man, if you want, if you walk into a store and think, I want to create my own tradition, I don't want to go with a diamond, yeah. I really want to have a it's it's a it's a really good choice. And you are the spinel man. So if you if you do want a spinel, this uh, is your guy right here. We do, we he will hook you up. Yeah, I tend to collect them. So. <laughs> you may have to tug it out of yeah. your collection. I cry a little bit every time I sell one. Yeah. Uh, and number one. So number three. Uh, so gemstones to choose if you don't want a diamond. We got some garnets. We got spinel. And number one. The number one gemstones to choose if you don't want a diamond. Rubies and sapphires. Yeah. Rubies and sapphires. Uh, and there's a reason that we mentioned those together. So what are rubies and sapphires and why do they make the best diamond alternative in your engagement ring? It is generally shocking to people they don't realize rubies and sapphires are the same gemstone. The only thing that separates a ruby from a sapphire is color. That's it. That's it. They're both corundum. And there is sapphires mm-hmm. come in every color but red. Okay. Because if a if a Sapphire is red. It is indeed a ruby. Ruby. So a pink sapphire is a ruby that's not quite red enough to be considered a ruby. Does that make sense? Yes. And so, and it, of course, it can be a fine line sometimes between pink sapphire and ruby, but you generally right. know when when you see if it's a it's a kind of knows the color you associate with a ruby is conundrum. A, is that what you said? Not a conundrum. Oh, that's different. No, hold, <laughs> being on a show with you is a conundrum. <laughs> This, Touché, is, sir. this is Crundum. Well played. 
Corundum? Corundum. Okay, Corundum. Yes. And uh, it is the best choice, either stone, sapphire in any color, ruby, because they are a nine for hardness. Wow. Remember, diamonds are ten. Yes. It is the only gemstone, to my knowledge, that is a nine. Okay. That sounds important. And as far as toughness goes with those? It's very tough. Very, very, very tough. Is I don't know. The, I don't know what that's the scale. It's tough. Very. I don't. I don't know. Yeah. I don't. To be honest with you, I don't. Okay. I, it, it is an extremely tough gem. So if you wanted something that wasn't Again, a diamond, not close to diamond, right? Even though it's one down, but it is the closest you can get to a diamond. Okay. So if you wanted something that wasn't a diamond, mm -hmm. but you still wanted that that white mm. stone, okay? Would you suggest a, a white sapphire? Yeah, white sapphires can be beautiful. Uh, again, it doesn't. A lot of times people want to achieve what a diamond does without paying for a That's, diamond. You, well, can't. you can't. You can't. Well, I mean, there are, there, there are laboratory grown diamonds, which we touched on a little bit, and we'll probably dedicate a whole episode to yes, that. Yes, we will. And they really, you know, that's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fine alternative. It's something that, sh that, that somebody should consider, and it will, because it will have the brightness, it'll have the same dispersion as mm -hmm. a natural diamond, because it is a diamond. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just, it's just one that's made in a laboratory versus one mm -hmm. that, that, that came out of the ground. Mm -hmm. Um, white sapphires won't have that same dispersion. They won't have mm. the same brilliance that a diamond will have. Uh, you'll put it, again, like any gemstone, quality of the cutting matters. How yeah. skilled the cutter was to bring out as much fire in that stone as possible right. matters. Um, colored stones typically are not cut the way that diamonds are. They're not cut to retain weight, and they're not cut to retain uh, light performance. They're mm. cut to maximize the amount of color that the gemstone has. Yes. So a lot of times they'll be cut very deep. On purpose. On purpose, correct. Yeah. yeah. Because, and you'll look at them from the side. And they'll, you know, like a diamond might look like this, and the colored stone version of, of, of similar measurements might look you know, much deeper. And that's why they're trying to intensify the color of that stone. And I would think that affects, does that affect the carat weight then? Yes, dramatically. And, okay. the, and then you're, sometimes you're paying for the, the carat weight of that gem and not necessarily seeing the advantage. Yeah. Because same, it's deeper, thing, like, so it's not going to look as big yeah. from the top. Yeah. Because you're trying to maximize color yeah. more so than the sparkle yeah. and light performance, which is why you would cut it deeper so you could see Correct. more color, but that's going to sh shrink kind of the size of it from the top. Yeah. And you can't confuse the two. You can't say like a two carat ruby does not look the same as a two carat diamond. Mm. The material weighs different, you yeah. know, so it, and, and it's cut different. So you can't, it's again, like we talked about, uh, I think previous episode was, you can't really go into it saying, I want a two carat ruby. Right. Well, you don't know what that's going to look like. You, know, sure. just, okay. you really, with colored stones, we, we care more about the measurements of the stone, like you know, from five by eight millimeters. It doesn't sound as sexy, but it, right. it, it, that, that's generally what you're looking at. If you want to, if you have a certain size in mind, you care more about the measurements. Yeah. Um, but know that you are buying that diamond as a cost per carat somehow, yeah. because that's how I mm -hmm. buy them. And so, you know, that's not necessarily generally how they're, how they're priced, but that, it does affect the price, the yeah. weight, weight of it does. So you want to, to find line. You know, diamonds are one thing. The world of colored stones gets far more complex. Yeah. And most gemologists would, would agree with that. While mm -hmm. diamonds are the vast majority of what we do, colored stone, the world of colored stones can be very perplexing because there are yeah. lots of look-alike gems. You have to be careful with man-made things that really mimic the, the natural uh, material. And you have to be very well versed in what those are, treatments and things like that. So, so for that reason, though, like, do you, if I'm a customer, do I have to worry that you're going to try to steer me toward a diamond because it's less complex, it's easier to know about? Uh, that, like you just said, the world of colored stones is so complicated that maybe my jeweler doesn't really know that much about it, and so he just rather sell me a diamond. Like, am I going to have to worry that you're going to? try to steer me that direction or when somebody comes in and they want some other gemstone as a diamond you're more than happy to entertain that and work with them and, and that kind of thing is that i think that the the key is whether you're coming to this store or you're going to any store is that you want to make sure that you're dealing with a, a professionally accredited retail jewelry store somebody yeah. that has credentials from the american gem society somebody that has credentials from the gemological institute of america it matters not everybody at that store not necessarily even the person that you're dealing with does but you have to make sure that the people behind the scenes that are putting the items in the, in the showcases for you to consider have that knowledge. It's important. It really does matter. Yeah. Um, and to answer your question, am, are we going to do that when somebody comes? Am I going to steer them towards, a, towards a, a diamond because it's too difficult for me to explain spinel? 
I just explained Spinel in three minutes. I was no. very passionate about it. You can tell. Right. I'm actually as passionate about Spinel mm -hmm. probably as I am about diamonds. That doesn't mean that I think it should be an engagement ring stone per mm -hmm. se. Uh, I think yeah. it makes sense in a lot of situations where somebody wants it to maintain a certain price point or they want, they really just love the color of that. Well, okay, great. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm here to help them match with what's right for them. Again, right. my job as the jewelry professional in this case is to advise them on the pros and cons of that decision, whatever that may be. Sure. Nice job. There you oh, go. Oh, we're done? Yeah. So th those are, the, those are the, the gemstones to choose if you don't uh, want the diamonds. We have some garnets. We have spinel and we have rubies and sapphires. Be right back with the final facet. Visit us to view our signature collection of handmade diamond jewelry. Jack Lewis Jewelers. We know what this means. Real is rare. Real is a diamond. Hey everybody, thanks for listening to us again. And uh, to sum up this episode, I think it's important to know that what you want in your engagement ring, whatever you want that gemstone to be, that is completely 100% your decision. It's not what's in the best interest of the people trying to sell it to you. That doesn't alleviate their responsibility from explaining some of the pros and cons of choosing some of the gemstones that you walked in the front door having an anticipa anticipation of putting in your engagement ring. Uh, as we just explored, there are some really good alternatives, spinels, garnets. Uh, sapphires and rubies. And there also are some gemstones to avoid. And unfortunately, some of those gemstones may be things that you have in the back of your head as something you've always wanted in your engagement ring. Just walk into the process with an open mind. Understand that our role as professional retailers, retail jewelers, is not to sell you what we want to sell you. It's to advise you on what makes a good wearable piece to wear every day for the rest of your life. That's important. Uh, we understand what we sell here. We understand that it's not just sparkly metals and shiny rocks. We understand that what we do is we sell symbols that capture everything that you want to say with just handing somebody a piece of jewelry. Uh, you know, we always say that we get it. We understand what we do uh, because size doesn't matter. She knows. Hey there. Thanks for watching us talk to each other. Since you're still here, you should just subscribe. We're reimagining the Jack Lewis Jewelers YouTube channel, so come on this journey with us. Subscribe, hit the notification bell so you don't miss anything. So do it, and thank you.